Chapter 18 Spoilage, Rework, and Scrap First of all, you have to differentiate among spoilage, rework, and scrap. Spoilage are units of production, whether fully or partially completed, that do not meet the specifications required by customers for good units, and that are discarded or sold for reduced prices. While rework are units of production that do not meet the specifications required by the customers, but that are subsequently repaired and sold as good, finished goods. Scrap is the residual material that results from manufacturing a product. Scrap has low total sales value compared with the total sales value of the product. Scrap is similar to buying products, but scrap arises as a residual from manufacturing process and is not a product targeted for manufacture or sale by the firm. A certain amount of spoilage, rework or scrap is inherent in many production processes. Accounting for spoilage aims to determine the magnitude of spoilage costs and to distinguish between costs of normal and abnormal spoilage. To manage, control, and reduce spoilage costs, they should be highlighted, not simply folded into production costs. There are two types of spoilage, normal and abnormal spoilage. Normal spoilage is spoilage inherent in a production process that arises even under efficient operating conditions. Normal spoilage rates are computed by dividing the units of normal spoilage by the total good units completed. Management makes a conscious decision about the production rate per hour, which generates a certain level of normal spoilage. While abnormal spoilage is a spoilage that is not inherent in a particular production process and would not rise under efficient operating conditions. Abnormal spoilage is usually regarded as avoidable and controllable. To highlight the effect of abnormal spoilage costs, companies calculate the units of abnormal spoilage and record the cost in the loss from abnormal spoilage account, which appears as a separate line on the income statement. Spoilage in process costing using the weighted average and the first in, first out methods. Units of normal spoilage can be counted or not counted when computing output units, the physical and the equivalent ones, in a process costing system. Counting all spoilage is considered preferable and will be used in our examples here. What is the inspection point? This is the stage of the production process at which products are examined to determine whether they are acceptable or unacceptable units. Spoilage is typically assumed to occur at the stage of completion where inspection takes place. As a result, the spoiled units in our example are assumed to be 100% complete for direct materials. There are five step procedure for process costing with spoilage. The first step is to summarize the flow of physical units of output, identifying both normal and abnormal spoilage. Step two, compute output in terms of equivalent units. Spoiled units are included in the computation of output units. Step 3. Summarize total cost to account for. Step 4. Compute cost per equivalent unit. Step 5. Assign total cost to the units that are completed, to the spoiled units, and to the units in ending working process.
Here is our example for steps one and two. As indicated, the difference is the identification of both normal and abnormal spoilage for physical units and equivalent units. First, you have to get the total spoilage, and you can get it by adding the units in beginning working process inventory in addition to the units started less the total of the good units completed and transferred out in addition to the units in ending working process inventory. So this is equal to 10,000 units less 9,000 units. This is equal to 1,000 units. We call that normal spoilage is 10% of good output. So the number of units of normal spoilage equal 10% of the 7,000 units of good output or 700 units. With this information, you can then calculate the number of units of abnormal spoilage. Abnormal spoilage is equal to the total spoilage less the normal spoilage. 1,000 units less 700 units, this is equal to 3,000 units. In step 2, you compute the output in terms of equivalent units. Managers compute the equivalent units for spoilage the same way they compute equivalent units for good units. All spoiled units are included in the computation of output units. Because here the inspection point is at the completion of the production, the same amount of work will have been done on each spoiled and each completed good unit. Here we see step 3, 4, and 5. You see in rule 33 that the normal spoilage is included in the total cost of good units completed and transferred out, while the cost of abnormal spoilage is identified separately on row 35. In step 3, summarize the total cost to account for. The total cost to account for are all the costs debited to the working process. In step 4, Compute the cost per equivalent unit. And in step 5, assign cost to the units completed, spoiled units, and units in ending working process. This step now includes computing of the cost of spoiled units as well as the cost of good units. Exercise 18.21 This exercise is required to assign a cost using the weighted average method. So you're going to follow the same five-step procedure in order to assign a cost. First, you're going to apply the first two steps in order to get the physical units and the equivalent units. In the first step, Remember to get the total spoilage first, and then you're going to get the abnormal spoilage. In step 2, you're going to compute the equivalent units. Step 3, 4, and 5, you're going to summarize the total cost to account for that is including the working process beginning in addition to the costs that are added during the period. And then you're going to get the cost per equivalent unit by dividing the total cost by the number of equivalent units that are already done in step 2. Step 5 is the assignment of costs to good units completed and transferred, normal spoilage, abnormal spoilage, and the cost of working process ending. Continuing with the same example, in this slide, you see the calculations using the FIFO. As expected, the process is similar, except that the units to account for keep normal and abnormal spoilage units separate, as well as the units from the prior period. Of course, this is done so the appropriate cost can be used based on the period of production. Note how when assigning the cost, the FIFO method, Q 
keeps the cost of the beginning working process separate and distinct from the cost of the work done in the current period. All spoilage costs are assumed to be related to units completed during the period using the unit cost of the current period. Here is exercise 18.23 and referring to the information exercise 18.21, you are going to assign the cost using the FIFO method. Make sure in the first two steps, in step 1 and 2, to differentiate between the FIFO method and the weighted average method. In the FIFO method, there is a beginning working process and units that are started during the current period. And then you have to split this units, the all units, into units that are completed from the beginning working process and units that are started and completed. Then adding the normal spoilage, abnormal spoilage, and the ending working process. Step two is you get the equivalent units the same way that is used in the average method. Step 3 and 4, so you're going to add the working process beginning cost in addition to the cost added in the current period. But when you're going to get the cost per equivalent unit, make sure to divide the cost added in the current period divided by the equivalent units so as to get the cost per equivalent unit. And this is the second difference of the, of the FIFO method than the weighted average method. After getting the cost per equivalent unit, then you're going to apply step five by assignment of the cost to the good units completed and transferred out from the beginning working process. And then you're going to get the cost of the normal spoilage, the abnormal spoilage, and the ending working process. This is another exercise that you can train yourself on, exercise 18.35. This is the exercise and it is written, the model answer here, starting with step 1 and ending with step 5. 